in our church we like to take time and uh, take uh, and kind of go through these uh, series uh, of, of messages that we do we talk about healings we talk about deliverances we talk about prosperity we talk about salvation and evangelism and we, we like to take uh, a month month and a half a uh, few weeks in a row where we like to talk about subject that really dive into the particular subject and discover God's truth uh, about that subject last couple of weeks and today we're going to continue to talk about money prosperity and we're going to talk about and renew our mind and the outlook on finances and prosperity what pastor was talking today about is very important you have to understand that money like the bible says it answers for all things money is the is the legs that the gospel runs on you cut off the financing and a lot of missionaries won't be able to go out and do what they do you cut off the financings and the bible as you see it won't be able to be printed you know the Bible app, one of the Bible apps, I think Bible.is, Bible app, app cost over a few million dollars to design. Somebody had to sponsor it. You know that hospitals as you see and many hospitals around the world even till today are sponsored and uh, supported through church. You know that a lot of advancement in the medicine, it's happening or happened because church sponsored the scientists to make the vaccines to 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 study the issues finances is very very finances are very very important and one of the biggest damages that satan done in the church is came and injected the lie that finances are not spiritual finances are evil money are root of all evil even though bible says the love of money is root of all evil and the crippled church to do more than what it does today imagine if every Christian will embrace the mindset of God imagine if every Christian will embrace the character of Christ today we could accomplish as a church a lot more and establish God's kingdom and able to live and take care of our life and our families in Jesus mighty name money is influence see influence will happen whether Hollywood will influence or whether church will influence depends who's going to have more money who's going to run more ads who's going to run better tv shows money buys things and whatever those things are will depend what kind of influence will be today that's why we as a church we can't undermine this subject we can't belittle the subject we can't not talk about the subject and pretend as though it doesn't exist while we ourselves spend at least eight hours a day working for it while we ourselves put all the effort education knowledge to advance ourselves yet ignore godly principles and how it's obtained kept and how it's advanced even further today i want to talk about finances and prosperity but I want to shift to something a little bit different and I'm going to talk about very practical things. How many of you guys want to know practical things? How many of you say, you know what, I'm, I'm embracing the mindset and I think I'm ready. I'm ready to take a next step. I'm ready to do something. Turn to your neighbor, say do something. Turn to your other neighbor, say just do it. Amen, amen. Open to Psalm, uh, Psalm 1 psalm 1 and i'm going to read from amplified version it's a simple version and i like the way things sound there uh, and um, let's read from verse 1 we're going to read three verses blessed that's not psalm 1 that i sent okay i'll read it from my version uh, uh, a amplified version blessed and in parentheses says this happy fortunate prosperous and um enviable is the man who walks and lives not in a council of ungodly listen blessed meaning happy fortunate prosperous and enviable how many of you want to want to be in a position where people envy you when people look at your family and they see your family put together children you know great marriage and people envy you now we're not talking about jealousy we're talking about envy want to be in your place how many of you want to live in a house that it's enviable 
You know, when people come to, uh, come to your house or they drive up into your neighborhood and they're like, wow, look at that, huh? Or how many of you want to drive on a car that's enviable? Now you say, hey, you're, you're taking things out of context. No, I'm not. Bible says blessed is the man. The word blessed means enviable. One of the meanings of it. Blessed is the man who walks in the life, uh, who um, is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of ungodly. Uh, and a parenthesis says, following their advice, their plans and purposes, nor stands submissive or inactive in a path where sinners walk, nor sits down, in a parenthesis, meaning relax or rest, where the scornful gather, meaning the mockers. But his delight and desire in the law of the Lord and on his law, meaning the, pre the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of God, he habitually, say habitually, meditates, meaning ponders and studies at day and night. And he shall be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water, ready to bring forth and fr uh, to bring forth, uh, forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not fade or wither, and everything he does shall prosper. Say everything he does, everything he does. Shall, prosper. shall prosper. Do you want to prosper in everything you do? Today we're going to talk about practical things. There's a lot of things that we can take out of this scripture. But today I'm just going to, I'm going to skip those things. Things like, I know, uh, don't don't associate, uh, make sure you watch who you associate with, don't associate with sinners, um, don't spend your time with you know mocking people, don't, uh, you know, don't gather with the sinners, delight in God's word, desire his word, study his word and meditate. Those are the things that we must do to be successful but today we're going to go into the practical things. Um, point number one, if you want to be successful you have to set a goal, write it down, set a goal. Action without vision is a nightmare. Action without vision and goal is a nightmare. Bible says write a vision and make it plain so he who runs he can run according to it. Can I ask you today, do you have a goal? Do you have a plan? Is it clear cut? Is it, is it defined? If I ask you, can you automatically respond to it? Do you know where you're going? Do you know what you're trying to achieve in your life? Do you know, are you a dead fish that's floating with the stream of life and hoping the stream of life will take you somewhere nice? Or are you a fish that is alive, that is able to navigate through the river, whether it's upstream or downstream and get to the place where you desire? Are you just drifting through life without any goals, without any vision, without anything in your life? In Proverbs chapter 21 verse 5 says, the plans of a diligence leads to profit. The plan of a diligent leads to your prof uh, profits. Proverbs 21 5. Do you have a plan? If you don't have a plan, that means you're not working on anything. That means you're not striving in, uh, for anything. That means you don't know where you're going. You're just drifting through life and that will not lead to a successful life. To your neighbor say have a goal. Have a vision. Have a goal. Have a direction of where you're going. You know that uh, Harvard Business Study reveals a remarkable statistics. It says that 83% of population does not have a goal. That's why 83% of population are where they are at, they're average or below average. 14% only have a plan in mind but it's unwritten. Only 3% of goals are written down. Can you imagine 3 out of 100 people only have a written goal down. That's why they're in top 5% of wealth in the world. Write uh, point uh, somewhere underneath that point. Have a goal. Write it down. Have a written goal. A goal that's not written is not a goal. Have a written goal. It must be written on a paper. You know the statistic says that writing your goals gives you 95% higher chance of succeeding it. Just by simply writing. How much does it cost you to write a goal down on a paper? 
How much does time, how much does, uh, does it take of efforts and time to write a goal down? Barely nothing. Nothing. But you know it increases your chance by 95% of success. Now, don't, get, don't mix it up. It doesn't mean that 95% of the chance you'll be successful. It just increases your chances by 95%. Bible says write a vision and make it plain. Run according to it. Make it simple. Make sure the goals that you write, they're broken down. Have a long-term goal, mid-term goal, short-term goal. Make sure you have a, like a five-year goal or a dream, what you want to achieve. I want to move from this house, move into a better house, bigger house. Make sure you know what kind of house it is. How much it's going to cost. How many rooms it's going to have. What kind of square footage you have. The more detailed it is, the better chances you have achieving it. I'm going to go to college and I'm going to graduate. I'm going to get the job. It's going to take me four years to get this diploma. If I'm going to, if I'm going to take extra classes and I'm going to push a little harder, I'm going to take summer quarters. I'm going to achieve it in three years and, and I'm going to do this, this and that and I'm going to get it done. Write it down. Put it somewhere where you see it constantly. Put it on your mirror. Put it in the dash of, uh, dashboard of your car. Put it on a wall of uh, the wall of, uh, of your bedroom. So when you wake up you see it, when you go to bed it's the last thing you see. Have a vision, write it down, keep pursuing it. There was a, there was a story uh, now that Olymp Olympics going on, if you can put that picture up, of Michael Pe Phelps and Joseph Schooling. Michael Phelps in 2008, that was him, he had a dream to compete in Olympics and win a gold medal. Eight years later, in 2016, yesterday, Joseph beats Phelps, his hero, in a hundred meter butterfly and sets a world record. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Maybe your goal is you're struggling with your health, you're struggling with your weight. Get a picture. Maybe you had a picture of yourself at the time when you were healthy, or time when you were skinnier. One time when you were uh, uh, so, uh, in a better place in your health. Put that picture on your mirror. Put the picture in your wallet. Put the picture on your phone where you've seen. Constantly look at it. This is my goal. I want to go from 180 to well, 150. That's probably for girls. <laughs> for guys maybe a more like I want to go from 250 to down to 180 or something like that. Uh, uh, whatever your measurements are. But have a goal. Make sure it's in front of you every single day pursue it you know if you if, if your goal is to lose 50 pounds you won't lose 50 pounds in a month break it down my goal is to lose 10 pounds by the end of this month work towards it celebrate it just not make sure make sure don't celebrate with the cake <laughs> reward yourself the, re the behavior that you repeat the behavior that you, that you reward is the behavior that you tend to repeat have a vision. Have a goal. Turn to your neighbor and say, have a vision. Have a vision. Study says that if you're going to share your goal with someone close to you, you have more chances of achieving a goal. That's why we have home groups. You have to attend your home group. You have to be a part of a group that believes in you, that supports you. Somebody that can push you and challenge you. Somebody that can keep accountable for you. Uh, accountable. Somebody that can keep you accountable. Amen. Point number two, have an action plan. After you set a goal, have an action plan. Before we go into that, I want to share a personal story. Setting, setting a goal. Me and my wife a couple of years back, we wanted to <clears throat> double our income. And so we decided that we're going to begin to tithe according to the income that we want to see. Not according to the income that we have. And so uh, we started... We started tithing above what we were tithing, giving to where we wanted our income to go. First two, three months, I've got to tell you, it was tough because there's, there was a couple of times we had to borrow a couple hundred bucks because uh, we were short on bills. We had to adjust our uh, budget and kind of learn to live to, uh, you know, uh, below our means so that we could tithe. By faith, we made a goal we wanted to see. that We wrote it down and we put an action to it we decided to tithe 
what we gonna what, where we want our income to be it took about a year and two months or three months and our income doubled to the place where we were tithing it brings me to the second point is have an action plan vision without action is a daydream action without a vision is a nightmare but vision without action is just a daydream it's just a wishful thinking you know in our church we talk a lot about uh four dimension we talk about visualizing and and meditating and keeping a clear-cut picture of what you want to see where you want to be what you want to achieve in uh, in life through um through the word of god how bible teaches us you know and then a lot of us we kind of grasp that idea but this is the only step that we've grasped and this is the only step we're at and we're daydreamers you know one of the things that um, brothers called Joseph they called him uh, he's a daydreamer because Joseph had a big dream he had a dream that his oldest brother even his mom and dad will bow before him I mean wow that what a dream huh if you have that dream don't share it with your mother and father and your brothers just learn from learn from Joseph okay they called him a daydreamer here daydreamer comes but Joseph was no daydreamer Joseph was a hard worker Joseph had a plan maybe he didn't quite knew the plan but he worked hard he got into Potiphar's house he worked his way to the top he got into the prison he worked his way to the top God supernaturally opens the door he becomes a prime minister he saves the he saves the nation of Egypt and saves his own nation of Israel and supplies for the most for for the, that part of the world with food have an action plan set measurable goals put dates on them here's the problem sometimes when people do the first step and they start having goals in their life and uh, their goals like I want to make a million a year well it's awesome it's great I mean that's I would say go go for more why, why settle for a million but let's just say making a million a year and that's the goal that they have but they're making two thousand dollars a month well you're gonna get really you're gonna just get discouraged on that goal really really fast because two thousand dollars a month and that probably bring you about twenty thousand a year uh plus minus and a million dollars that's that's not incomparable you set goals that you can achieve i want to double my income i want to go from two thousand to four thousand and i want to do it by the end of the year uh or i want to do it in one year I want to do it in two years I want to do it in 18 months okay you strive for it you got to that point now you have more confidence in just in yourself now your self-esteem is built now you know you can go further now I'm gonna go from making uh, 4,000 I want to set a goal to make 10,000 you reach that goal and you and you go next it what, what you say why to set the dates because it will make you every day to push you forward push you forward you begin to say oh man I'm running out of time I gotta work harder I gotta come up with an idea I gotta open a business I gotta do something to get to that goal if your goal is just stays up in the air you'll say oh I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow tomorrow comes next thing you know in already in 2016 we're already in eighth month August and some of us have not done anything we haven't even started our new year's resolution time flies if you don't put a date on it you don't push yourself to achieve it what do you say what you say what if I put a date for it and I did not come even close to it be thankful where you got because if you would have not set the goal you wouldn't you would have stayed where you were you've got further than you were before don't give up on the goal set another date and keep pushing for it keep pushing for it keep pushing just because you didn't reach that goal within a year don't quit on it don't get discouraged remember that if you would have not set the goal you would have been where you were at least you're a bit further than you were now keep going set measurable goals so you can track your progress when you set big goals when you have big dreams big, the bigger the dream the longer time it takes it's easy to get discouraged once you get discouraged you stop working on your uh, on your dream your goal and where God has uh, where, where God wants to take you if you are tracking your progress if you're having goals that you achieve day after day, journal, have things, write significant things that happen to you, write little progresses that you make so that when you're discouraged, you can go back to it. See God's faithfulness, how far has God taken you? And you say to yourself, if God brought me to this place, He's going to take me further. If God didn't fail me up to this point, that means He has a plan for me, He has a destiny, He's going to take me further. Am I helping somebody? This is how you become a person of success. 
this is the blueprint to become a successful man and women a person that will make a difference in your life in your family and make a difference in the world around you amen um, and point number three where I just want to spend more time on it do something turn to your neighbor say do something a lot of people not a lot of people I'm, I'm lying people that get to this to stage number two where actually set goals and they have a get a plan they write their schedule down they begin to kind of uh they break their schedule uh, down of every day what i'm going to do here what i'm going to do there what i'm going to do on the weekends what i'm going to do next week what i'm going to do a week afterwards uh and and even if they get to that to that stage a lot of times they just don't do it they just quit you know by january 5th 80 percent of people quit on their new year's resolu resolution 15 days afterwards they just i'm gonna go to the gym tomorrow tomorrow comes uh you know what i feel tired today uh, i'm gonna go tomorrow for sure i'm gonna wake up early you know early, uh, tomorrow not only you didn't go you slept in and were late to work and tomorrow turns into after tomorrow and after tomorrow and that's our life that's how most that's how 80 percent of people live their life do you want to be above average? Do you want to achieve, accomplish something great in your life? You got to change your habits. You got to ch change what you do. Success is hidden in application. Write that down. Success is hidden in application. There are people that have so much knowledge yet they do nothing with it. They have college degrees. They have um, they have knowledge of how to do and how not to do and they tell everybody what to do except they don't do it themselves you all of you have those uncles and aunts that give you financial advice yet that are dead up to the throat yeah i sadly i have those too um but success is hidden not in knowledge knowledge is the key but in application matthew chapter 7 verse 24 jesus says this everyone who hears these words of mine and what and does them will be like a wise man who builds a house on the rock and a foolish man builds a house on the sand sand it's easier to build a house on the sand a wise man takes longer he puts an application probably they both went to uh, some kind of a carpenter school or something like that a construction school one man decide to apply his knowledge uh, and 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 dig and, and put in foundation like you're supposed to be the other one ignores the the the, the instructions and builds it on a house because it's faster it's better he doesn't have to put much time bible says the time of test came and one was justified another one was destroyed the point of what Jesus is saying is that it's not the hearing it's the application that will make you successful it's by doing something it's by applying taking that little knowledge that you have and applying it and being becoming successful in your life Proverbs chapter 6 verse 9 through 11 says this read uh, listen to this how long will you lie there you sluggard when will you get up from your sleep a little sheep a little slumber a little folding of hands to rest and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed robber what the scripture says is that folding of hands and a little nap here and there a little sleep will surely that's a promise from God turn you into poor person you have to begin to work and do something i want you to look at the statistics of wealth uh, wealthy people virtue, uh, um, wealthy people versus, uh, versus poor people it says this 70 percent of wealthy uh, eat less than 300 calories of junk food um, 97 of poor people 97 of poor people eat more than 300 calories of junk food. 23% uh, of wealthy gamble, 52% of poor people gamble. 80% of people are focused on accomplishing some single goal in a day. Only 12% of people do. 76% of wealthy exercise, 
irrevocable, whatever that word is, for four days a week. 20, 23% of people do. 63% of wealthy listen, listen to an audio book during communes to work versus 5% of people do. Uh, poor people do. 81% of wealthy maintain a to-do list versus 19% of poor. 63% of wealthy uh, parents make their children read two or two or more books of non-fiction books a month versus 3% of people. 70 of wealthy uh, parents make their children volunteer 10 hours or more a month versus 3% of poor people. 80% of wealthy make birth, uh, happy birthday phone calls versus 11% of poor people. Uh, 67 of wealthy uh, write down their goals versus 17% of poor people. 88 of wealthy read 30 minutes or more each day for educational or career reasons versus 2%. Let's go to the next slide. Six of wealthy say what's on their mind versus 69% of the poor. Ah, now you can from, from this statement alone you can determine where you're gonna end up. 79 of wealthy network five hours or more each month versus 16% of poor. Uh, 67 of wealthy watch one hour or less TV, uh, uh, less of TV every day versus 23% of poor. 6% Six, uh, 6 of wealthy watch reality TV versus 78% of poor. If you cut that out right here and just spend reading, I promise you, you're going to see some results in your finances. 44% of wealthy make up three hours, three, wake up three hours before work ver, uh, to start versus only 3% of people. 74 of wealthy teach good daily success habits to their children versus only 1% of poor. 84% of wealthy believers uh, believe good habits create opportunity, uh, opportunity uh, luck versus 4% of poor. 76 of wealthy believe bad habits create de um, detrimental luck versus 9% of poor. 86 of wealthy believe in lifelong education and self-improvement versus 5% of poor. And uh, last one, 86 of wealthy love reading versus 26% of poor. Now, I want you to notice all the way up to number 17, all, first 16 of them, it's all about do. They have a task list, they have a goal, they have this, they do this, they read, they do, they do, they do. Only about three of them here talks about belief. Now, we've been covering about belief and believing. It's very, very important. But do you see the difference? Do you see the difference what makes a person rich? And what makes a person poor? It's what they do that makes a difference. Where do you want to be today? Where do you want to be five years from now? Do you just want to be a person that has a wishful thinking? A person that wishes to be uh, like that song Mars, Mars Bruno wrote. I, I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad. Okay. But wanting to be a billionaire and doing something about it is two different things. By the way, when they ask him why a billionaire, not why a millionaire, he says, well, because a million dollars is not that much nowadays. So I, I would say lift you by higher. All joking aside is we got to put action to work. Bible says that everything that he does will prosper. Everything that he does is prosper. Well, I want to ask you today, what are you doing today? What are you working on today? What project have you taken on? What is your hands doing? Bible says that, that all the works of your hands will be blessed. But are your hands doing something else besides flipping a remote control? Or playing a Halo or whatever they play nowadays? Pokemon Go, that's the one. At least you get an exercise walking around. But my question is, what are you providing for God to bless? What are you doing with your life? Let's look into just a plan of action. I'll give you five quick things before we wrap it up. Number one, educate yourself. Educate yourself. Study, learn. Continuously improve yourself in your area. If it's construction, if it's cars, if it's uh, engineering, if it's a uh, medical field, constantly improve yourself subscribe to magazines subscribe to articles subscribe to blog guys today we're drowning in the world of information so much information it's about it's only for you to pick and choose what you want 
what you want to receive somebody said that we're drowning in the world of infor uh, in the sea of information yet starving for wisdom today information is everywhere choose the right information advance yourself i spend 30 40 minutes every single day reading uh, just random articles here and there about electronics about politics i read about um I, you know I read about uh, even things like science and and, and uh, you know about business different articles every single day to enrich myself to stimulate myself to motivate myself to get my mind working to get my juices flowing you have to educate yourself number two get a coach get a coach your coach can be your pastor your leader your parents your coach could be your employee uh, employee uh, employer you know you can learn from your you know most employers are willing to share the secret of success and how they got there you know most people that are succeeded they're easily can they they easily converse uh, you can start in conversation with them very easily if you ask them for tips and and ways of success and how they succeeded they'll be more than happy to share with you how they succeed it's like their pride it's like their accomplishment hey somebody recognized that i that i succeeded of course I'm gonna let you know hey here are the things you know just ask nobody's gonna punch you in the nose for asking no. have a coach before you get into a certain area find those people that succeed in those areas those that are failed you can learn from both of them ask how to succeed in it don't jump with all your two feet in it you might drown educate yourself find a coach in this area your coach can be a book podcast Google can be your coach you know that if you do it properly and use it properly have a coach practice number three practice practice what did they say makes it perfect but you say well how can I practice business when I don't have money to start how can I practice uh, buying a property when I you know I don't have the money how can I practice you know this or that or that you know if I you know I, I can't do it right now I don't have money I don't maybe I don't have time I'm still working in school uh, I'm still finishing school I'm, I'm working uh, all these crazy hours do virtual deals before I bought my first real estate property I did many many virtual purchases what I mean by that I went and found a place that I want to buy I ran the numbers I asked you know I asked different people what is going to take to buy it what's going to be the interest rate what's going to be the payment how much is going to cash flow what needs to be fixed I did literally hundreds of deals before I purchased one I'm in the middle of of land development and before I got that land development that I'm working on I did probably at least 20 to 30 of them I actually went and told the per man with the, with the real estate agent told them that I had the money I'm interested I one time I even signed a deal and gave $500 earnest money when I knew there's no way I could do it pull that land yeah I lost the earnest money but I'll, I'll tell you something that I learned I went to the city I figure out what needs to be done what are the codes who do I need to hire how much is gonna cost uh, how much is engineering how much is short plotting how much is this and that I I couldn't do I didn't have money to do it at that moment it cost millions and millions of dollars but I've learned something and when opportunity presented that I could take advantage of it I knew what to do and I took advantage of it um, there was a time there was a time I um, I bought a car uh, Ford Fusion that I that, that I have now that I'm selling if you want to buy it you can talk to me but uh, I bought the car and it was brand new 2000, uh, 2014 and there was a damage on the front and so I was trying to buy off parts for the car from a junkyard anywhere that I could to get it cheaper because from dealers uh, buying parts from dealers it's like might as well go buy a new car from them and so I bought all the parts but I couldn't find a grill for the front so I went to look at the dealers how much the grill cost and the grill cost about $700 I was like you know I put together a car for less than that and um, and so I was I was wondering man it can't be this grill is simple it's plastic except that there's like eight different pieces and each piece costs like seven seventy dollars a hundred twenty dollars for another piece and this piece and this piece and I'm, I'm thinking to myself look 
um, I bet somebody else has the problem that I do. So let me find a solution how to find a cheaper grill and create one or make one. I mean, it can be hard to mold a plastic grill and put it on the car, save myself a bunch of money and then maybe start selling. So what I started doing is I went on different websites to figure out uh, which uh, factory I need to go uh, to get moldings. I contacted some companies from overseas, some in America, specifically ones in China. I learned about different kinds of plastics, which ones are bendable, which ones are breakable, which ones are stronger. Like, I never used it, but I learned the molding process. I learned how, I, I learned how it takes, or not molding, casting process. I learned about different plastics, which one responds, how to do heat, and all this stuff. I never end up doing and, uh, and mass producing all this stuff, but I learned something. Next time opportunity presents my, uh, to me to cast something or to do some kind of mass production or maybe in a, some kind of idea, I know where to go, which companies to contact for molding. I know about plastic and about all these things. And I can go on and on and on and on about all these things. This is how I started my screen printing business. I knew nothing about it. I went and bought a DVD that taught me how to screen print. I went and bought the equipment. I learned myself and then I had a successful screen printing business. Same thing with, um, uh, I knew nothing about satellites and, and communication. Just jumped into it. Uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua called said, hey, does any of you know anything about satellites and communication? Uh, there's a project in uh, Georgia that I, I need somebody to go and look at the property and look at the equipment and give me feedback. I was like, sure, yes, I do. I had no idea about it. <laughs> me and Brent, we went to Georgia. We had those people in Georgia educate us about the satellites, the equipment, the backup power, everything that it takes to run the whole facility. And guess what? Now I know how the satellites and how telecommunication runs through satellites. Will I ever use it in my life? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I've learned something. And it opened doors for me. I mean, I can go on and on and on. I mean, things like I had an idea one day. Uh, I was taking photos. You know, uh, you can do scan. Uh, like a scan a document now on your phone. You, you, you take a picture and you can send somebody. And one time I had to scan like uh, 50 or 60 pages. So you can imagine how painful it was to, you know, trying to align the, the thing, make sure the lighting is right, make sure there's no uh, shadow and all these things. And I was, and I, you know, after doing 50 or 60 of them, I was like, there must be a better idea to do this. And so I started thinking about having like a scanner where you place a phone and an app and you place a paper, you know, like one of those automatic feeders and then it just app just takes a perfect photos every single time focused and with the, with the thing. And I drew up the, uh, you know, what it's going to take. I took apart a printer at church and I look at all the gears, how it operates, how the feeder works. I looked into creating a software. I wrote everything down. I, I practically put together a virtual business. I never end up going through with it. I look at the market share, what's the, what's the possibilities, what's the, you know, uh, what's, um, what kind of market it is and, you know, how much I'll be able to charge for it. I never end up going through it, but I've completed a successful idea, at least in my head. I figure out how much it's going to cost, how much this is going to do, what I have to do, what kind of people I'm going to have to bring on board to make this happen. Nobody stopping you from making virtual deals, whether it's buying a real estate property, whether it's Nobody's going to stop you from going in and asking a bank, how much do you have to pay for down payment? What kind of payments are you going to be? What kind of credit score are you going to have to have? Most people don't even know that. They just kind of blindly go in. Or even buying a car. I mean, it's the things like these that sets aside one person from another. There was a time where I had a hedge fund business where I was trading the market. And I came up with an algorithm to do an automatic uh, execution of trades. I knew nothing about coding. I knew nothing about writing algorithms. I knew nothing about logic and how it's supposed to do. I partner up with the person and um, he taught me all of these things. I shared my side of the knowledge of trading. He shared his side of the knowledge of, uh, of, uh, of making algorithms, what it goes in it. And today, if I have if I come to the place and opportunity where I'll need to come up with some kind of algorithm or some kind of app that will that that the runs on algorithms I at least at least I'll be able to have a conversation with the person and tell them exact uh, to tell them in general what I want and they will execute on details you understand you have to do something you have to engage in work and God will bless yourself uh, bless you God will 
God will guide your path. You make a plan, Bible says, and God directs your steps. In other scripture, God says that the, the steps of the righteous are, are directed by the Lord. But if you don't make a step, if you don't go some direction, I tell you, I have notebooks and my wife can tell you sometimes she would catch me in the middle of the night at two o'clock. I can't sleep. My mind is working and I'm writing things down. I'm writing things down. I've wrote maybe a hundred different business plans for a hundred different things. I have some things I'll tell you it's laughable. But nonetheless, I practiced. Practice. And the last thing, or two more things, work hard. Work very hard. Work very hard. What I was talking about uh, last Sunday. You have to work. You have to be diligent in your work. And the last one is pray even harder. Uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua says this. Work as everything depends on you. Pray is everything, as if everything depends on God. God is waiting on you to make a move. Will you make a move? Will you begin to do something? Say do something. Do something. Say do something. do something. God promises to bless the work of your hands. But you got to work. You got to work. You got to let your hands do something. You got to take your hands off of remote control and begin to put it into some kind of a, uh, to do something productive, something practical. Whether it's studying and having a career. Whether it's uh, come up, coming up with some kind of an invention. Whether it's coming up with some kind of creative uh, invention or manufacturing or something or some kind of idea. You know that you don't even have to create or make something to, to be successful. You can just have an idea that will improve another idea that will generate millions of dollars because of it and you can get a portion from it you know you can there's in this day and age it's the easiest way to make money literally a guy in a basement with his friends came up with an app called Instagram and six months six months later got bought out by for six billion dollars Facebook started in a basement Google started by two Russians. <laughs> I mean today the possibilities are endless. My question is do you have a plan? If you do have a plan, is it clear enough? Is it, you know exactly what you're going for? Do you have a plan of action? Do you know what you're going to do next three months, next six months, next year? Do you want to have employees in your company if you own a company? How big does your comp how big do you want the company to be? Or do you always want to, or do you just want to own a company and just always work by yourself? Pretty much have another job, which comes with a lot more responsibilities and stress. It's up to you what you do. The habits, the small things, reading books, listening to podcasts, listening to audio podcasts. You, in this day and age, you, it's up to you to succeed. It's up to you what you're going to do. And God will bless the work of your hands. Did you receive anything, church? Come on, put your hands together.